Hey, hey everyone. I hope that you are doing absolutely fabulous. Um, I am Ali Tessitori and I am so excited to be able to share with all of you about inviting to the coach opportunity. Uh, so if you are jumping on, give me some hearts, show me some love, let me know that I'm in the right page because I am always paranoid that I'm going live on the wrong page. So comment below. Um, and let me know where you're from, what team you're representing with uh, Team Beachbody. So tell me your team name below, and I'm so excited to get started. I'm gonna try really hard to keep this short and simple. I give lots of bullet points, so get out your notebooks. Hey, April. Oh, I'm so, where are you from, girl? And tell me your team that you're representing. So, get your pen, your paper out, your notes on your phone, your notes on your laptop, Get it out because I'm gonna give you some step-by-step -step tips on how to invite to the coach opportunity. Woo woo, bestie from Ohio, I love it. Hey Megan, hey Allie, I see lots of amazing coaches jumping on here. So we're gonna get going because I know some of you might be on your lunch break. I am here, just finished my lunch and I'm gonna share with you guys kind of about my journey from being the extroverted person who was the introverted person that did not want to invite to the coach opportunity because who isn't afraid to invite to the coach opportunity? Uh, but in saying that, my name is Ali Tessitori and I am the founder of Imperfectly Balanced. We are a two year, two time elite, hopefully going for number three. And we are top, I think we're number 36 in the company right now, 10 star lifetime diamond team. We're just an amazing team. and. Coaching is my heart, it's my passion, just like all of you, and this is one of those big speed bumps, one of those big hurdles that so many of us need to overcome, inviting to the coach opportunity to really grow our business and to really have a bigger impact on the people that we wanna help. So in saying that, I wanna ask all of you to get involved. I want you to raise your hand if you struggle with inviting to the coach opportunity. Raise your hand if you struggle with inviting to the coach opportunity. Give me that little emoji because I can raise my hand a hundred times. Like literally a hundred times if I had a hundred hands, I would raise my hands and say, I was afraid. I was afraid to invite to the coaching opportunity. I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of failure. Um, I was embarrassed, you guys. Um, I was that. Christina, I see your hand go up. Allison, I see yours go up. I was the coach who lived in the closet for like four months. Uh, I did not want to talk about the coach opportunity. I, I just was scared of it. Um, I knew how to invite to the challenge group. I believed in the challenge group opportunity. But honestly, coaches, I didn't believe in the coach opportunity, like being a coach. I believed in the challenge group. That was easy. I could help people with their health, their fitness. Um, but getting someone to become a coach, that's a whole new level. I mean, that's scary, especially as a new coach. Even as a coach who's been here, you know, I've just been a coach for three years now, and I still get nervous to invite to coaching. But I don't get invited when I follow my steps. And that's what I'm going to show you because you just get into this, you know what to do, you know what to say, you know who, who to connect with. But for me, I was scared and I was afraid to invite to the coaching opportunity because I didn't believe in what coaching offered people. And I also didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the confidence because I, I didn't understand how coaching was going to help me and, and how it was helping me at that time when I was a new coach. And even to this day, I still have new whys for why I'm a coach and new reasons why I'm able to invite new people to join the coach opportunity because I've evolved as a person, as a leader, as a woman, as a wife, as a mom. And that's the same thing for all of you. Probably my biggest roadblock, and I'm going to tell you about my biggest roadblock for inviting to the coach opportunity besides fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of just not believe, honestly not believing in this opportunity was that I did not become a coach for the income. And that was my biggest roadblock for inviting to the coach opportunity. And I say that because that was a self-limiting belief for me, one of the biggest self-limiting beliefs for the inviting to the coach opportunity was I didn't sign up to be a coach for the income. And I know that so many coaches sign up for the income. So many of the coaches 
that I watched when I would find their YouTube coach opportunity or I would watch a webinar, everyone talked about becoming a coach for the income and I did it. So I use that as an excuse not to talk about the coach opportunity because I felt like I couldn't relate to people because I, I didn't become a coach to have financial freedom. Yes, it's brought that to my family, but that wasn't why I originally became a coach. So for me, I knew at three months into coaching, I thought, you know what? I have to stop saying that I can't invite to the opportunity because I didn't come in to it for the income. Because there's so many reasons that we all have become coaches, not because of the income. Now, yes, income is huge. Financial freedom for so many people, um, coaching has transformed their life because of the financial freedom. But for me, that's not what I could lead with. And even to this day, as a coach, three years into the business, I still don't lead with financial freedom because that wasn't my mission for becoming a coach. And that's when I decided, if I wanted to take coaching to the next level, if I wanted to become a diamond coach, because at that point I was an emerald coach, I knew I had to figure out my whys, my reasons for becoming a coach. And I loved, if you guys did not listen to the National Wake Up Call by, by Trina Gray on Monday, you need to listen to it because she talked about taking your big idea. That is your why. That is your why for coaching. And listen, you're not gonna have one why. You might have 20 reasons why you became a coach. But for me, I wanted to narrow it down to what are my top, top reasons why I wanted to become a coach. And I wrote them down. And for me, I'm gonna give you those examples. My whys for becoming a coach. One, hands down, was for my own health and fitness accountability, becoming a coach, because I needed support. I needed accountability. I needed women, people who related to me, who got me, who accepted me. I had come out of severe postpartum anxiety. I was getting off medication. I needed a group of women, of people to uplift and empower me on a day-to-day -day basis. I needed coaching for me. I needed something for myself outside of being a mom of three and a wife. Uh, two, as I needed friendship. I needed friendship. I needed a group of women. I needed women who uplifted me, who empowered me, who loved health and fitness. I'm also a registered nurse and a certified holistic health coach. I wanted to be surrounded by other women who, and other coaches who were doing what I was doing, who had the same mission that I had in life. Uh, number three is, I'm just gonna say the truth, I had three kids. I had dropped out of grad school. I needed something for myself. I was a stay-at-home mom for eight years and I needed something for me. I had dropped out of grad school so that I could be more present with my kids. My husband traveled a lot for work and I just needed something to fill up my soul. I just needed something to give me more passion and more purpose and just another identity outside of being a mom of three and a wife and being a stay-at-home mom. So I had that. So those were my, my three reasons why I became a coach. And I will say this, at one year into coaching, my other reason for becoming a coach was the business opportunity. When my income grew from zero to 203% in one year, I thought, I guess this is a business opportunity. When we became elite in our first year, I'm like, this is a business opportunity. And that became my fourth reason why I love coaching and why I believe that people should be a part of coaching. So I have my four reasons why. Why I'm a coach and how I can help people. And that right there is your number one step. That is your number one step on how you are going to invite to the coaching opportunity. So write this down, get your pen, your paper out, and you're gonna put number one. And I want you to discover your whys. Just like yesterday on the National Wake Up Call, what's your big idea? I want you to write down your whys for coaching. Why did you become a coach? Is it for accountability? Is it for friendship? Is it for you know a sisterhood, a community? Is it for family? Is it for more passion, more purpose? Is it to have um, uh, a, a new hobby for yourself? Is it to have financial freedom? Is it for the business opportunity if you're a healthcare and fitness professional? Is it to become a stay-at-home mom or to be able to become your own boss? I want you to write down three to four whys because those three to four whys are exactly how you are going to present the coaching opportunity to people every single day. Um, so write them down, write them down. And if you want to, if you know what they are, make them short and sweet and comment below with your whys. I want you guys to get part, you know, involved with this. Write below what are your whys for coaching, write three or four of them, explain them to me, 
because this is the thing. Those three to four whys, or maybe even five or six, but I really want you to narrow it down to three or four, is those need to have an emotional connection to you. An emotional connection. My whys that I just shared with you for my own health and fitness, for wanting more passion and purpose, for looking for more friends, those whys can actually make me cry, for real, because they are so deeply rooted to who I am and why I became a coach. They're all about my journey. They're all about what I needed in my life. I needed support. I needed, I needed friendship. I needed something more for my life because I had just come out of a severe health struggle and I needed, I needed something bigger than what I could provide for myself. So those things need to have an emotional connection because those emo emotional connections are what is going to help you connect with other people and their needs. Um, I, I find women, I find coaches who connect with my three to four whys for becoming a coach. That is how I find the people to invite. Because I take those three to four things, like I just see Diana said, accountability, ability to earn an income so I can eventually quit my full-time job, the friendships. That is what she should be leading with when she invites people to the coach opportunity. Lisa said purpose. Purpose, you know how many, how many people are looking for purpose in life, more passion and more purpose? For goodness sake, throw everything else out there. People want to wake up with joy and with excitement in life. They want to have meaning in life and coaching can do that. You can connect with anyone on an emotional level when you say you can wake up every day excited about life and having joy in life. Who doesn't want that? I um, mean, that's what coaching can do for you. So you're going to lead. When you invite to the coach opportunity, don't worry, I'm going to tell you how to invite and lead to the coach opportunity. When you lead with those three to four emotional reasons why you became a coach, you're going to be able to connect with the people that need you. You're going to connect with the people that need coaching. I have goosebumps right now thinking about it. You're going to find your tribe. You're going to attract your tribe and you're going to get those people who are like you who become a coach because they need financial time and freedom. You're gonna find those people who need purpose. You're gonna find those people who are healthcare and fitness professionals who are tired of working their butts off and they want more freedom. You're gonna find those people that are you. And that is the point of this. That is the point of when you invite to the coach opportunity is discovering your why so that you can find the people that have your same whys and you can connect with them and so that you can lead with the same mission and the same movement and the same passion. Um, so the next, number two. Okay, so number one, you guys got number one, is I want you to discover your whys. That's your first step in inviting to the coach opportunity. Write down three to four reasons. Number two is get uncomfortable. Oh my gosh, I think we all don't wanna get uncomfortable, right? Who wants to get uncomfortable? Whether you're starting a new fitness program, whether you are signing up to be a new coach, you know, like yesterday, or maybe you've been a coach for three years like me, you've got to be willing to get uncomfortable. Growth does not happen in the comfort zones. I just completed the 80 day obsession test group. And let me tell you, I was scared as all get out to commit to that program. It's 80 days. I'm like, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to be able to do this. Mom of three, I'm busy. I can't do it. The holidays, birthdays, travel, but you know what? I committed. And I got uncomfortable and I did things that I normally wouldn't do and I experienced so much growth personally and professionally because I got uncomfortable. It's the same exact thing with the coach opportunity. You've got to get uncomfortable to grow. And I, you guys might have heard this multiple times. If you want to grow the business, you got to share the business. And for most of you, including myself, sharing the business is the uncomfortable part. But that is when the growth occurs. Um, so for me, I was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable sharing the opportunity, but at three months into coaching, I said, I got to do something. I got to do something because I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to hit the next level, the next, whatever it is for me, it was diamond. And I said, I'm going to get uncomfortable. So my success partner led her first coach opportunity on webinar. I think it was any meeting and I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm just gonna do it. I've never done one before. I've never really participated in one. I had never seen one. I watched my success partners um, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do it and see what happens. I did it. I did it on any meeting and it was awful. It was absolutely awful. 
My graphics were awful. I'm not a graphics queen. I'd rather just talk and share and move my hands around. And my graphics were awful, but this is the thing. I invited 26 people to listen to that coach opportunity. I had never done one before. And I was an emerald at that time. And I had never spoken about the coach opportunity before until that four month marker because I was so scared to talk about the opportunity. But I knew if I wanted to grow, I had to get uncomfortable. So I did this event, 26 people showed up. That event got me to Diamond in two days. That one event. If I never was willing to get out of my comfort zone to grow and lead that webinar that I did that was absolutely awful, the pictures were awful, it was very salesy, it was not good, I never would have become a diamond coach and I never would have grown and I never would have developed to become the leader I am today. So you have to be willing to get uncomfortable when you invite to the coach opportunity. And I will say this. When I did that event, I was a coach for four months. I went from Emerald to Diamond. I got my first business builder from that call, and then I got my next second business builder at six months. I got my third business builder at eight months, and I got my fourth business builder at nine months as a new coach, so nine months. And we still got a lead in our first year. And I say this to you is take advantage of the opportunity to share this incredible gift that we have. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of rejection. Don't hide in the closet that you're a beach body coach. Own it. Get uncomfortable. This is your business. Be the CEO of your business and find your tribe. Find your people that need you, that need this opportunity. So I'm going to ask you, and I want you to comment below, okay? Is how did you get uncomfortable in the month of November with inviting to the coach opportunity? How did you get uncomfortable? Because this is gonna give you some reflection time. Is how did you get uncomfortable with inviting to the coach opportunity? Did you invite your challengers to the coach opportunity? Did you reach out to any of your challengers that were showing incredible progress, that were plugging into the challenge group? Did you invite them? Did you make a post on Facebook or Instagram, a call to action post saying, join my team, join this opportunity, join this movement? Did you do that? Did you make a call to action on your Insta stories? Guys, Insta stories is like the bomb diggity. You should all be using that. Did you make a call to action on your Insta stories? Did you do that? Um, did you lead a coach opportunity event? Did you lead one like that? Did you, I'm trying to read my other ones that I wrote down here. Um, did you post on social media? I already said that one, but did you post on social media and breadcrumb about this opportunity and share your whys? Did you do that? Because if you didn't, then you gotta change some things. Which leads into my number three, which I'll say that I'm seeing all you ladies, all you coaches up there post. Private message, live on video. Um, did a post this morning about purpose and coaching inviting. Um, love it, love that all of you coaches are getting out of your comfort zone. I love it, but you can do better. Push yourself, push yourself to the next level. And that's where number three comes in as I want you to take action, okay? Do not be a collector of data. Don't listen to me tell you to find your three to four whys uh, for coaching. Don't listen to how I'm telling you to get uncomfortable. I want you to take those three to four whys, get out of your comfort zone, and take some freaking action with inviting people to the business opportunity. Because if you don't share the biz, you're not gonna grow the biz. Um, so this is how you're gonna do is you're gonna take action right now. You're gonna take action right now, and I want you to write all these things down. You should be already taking notes, but you're gonna take more notes, and if you can, get your calendar out, because I'm actually gonna really get you guys uncomfortable, really, really uncomfortable, and make you do something. Obviously, I can't make you do it, but I'm gonna encourage you to do it. So, the first thing is this, is I want you to stop looking at the coach opportunity as this like awkward, salesy thing, because it's not, it's a gift. And if I was never present this opportunity for a solid year, a solid year I was invited to the coach opportunity. If I was never offered this opportunity, I wouldn't be here today. Three years later, um, leading an incredible team, having an incredible local community, my life being transformed, my family's life being transformed. So look at this as a gift. And when you take those three to four whys, those emotional whys of why you're a coach, 
you're going to be able to talk to every single person that you meet because you're going to be able to connect with them on their needs and why they need this gift. So these things, six, six things I'm going to give you on how you can take action right now with inviting to the coach opportunity. Now, of course, I'm going to say do all of these six things because I do all of these six things, but do what you can do. Do what fits your lifestyle and do what makes you feel comfortable and give it your best, give it your all in these areas. But I know if you do this, you're gonna start connecting with those coaches that are meant to be on your team and your tribe and you're gonna grow as a leader. I'm telling you, if you do these things, you're gonna grow so much as a leader personally and professionally in every single way. So the first one, first one, you ready? This is really easy, is invite three people a day to the coach opportunity. Invite three people. There's your donuts, just like Carl says. Get your donuts done every morning. All you need to do is three. Three new coach invites a day is an average of like 100 new coach invites a day. Can you imagine if every single person right now on this training invited three new people to the coach opportunity every single day? Can you imagine how much growth we would see? It would be incredible how many lives would be changed. You guys, three people is so easy to invite. I can invite three people in two minutes. Easy, breezy. Three people, do it first thing in the morning, get those donuts done, three new coach invites. That's my first challenge to you. First way to take action, invite three people every single morning before you start your day. That's gonna give you 100 new coach invites a month. Hello, you're guaranteed to grow your team by doing that. The second is this, is obviously you wanna be sharing about this opportunity in your everyday life. But I want you to make a purposeful post about the coach opportunity once a week. Once a week, this is so easy. I know lots of you work full time, you don't have um, a lot of, I'll answer that question in one second, Ashley, at the end. So remind me if I forget. Um, a lot of you have limited time, maybe you can't constantly be on social media, but you can plan out a post. You can sit down every single Sunday and you can craft a post about one of your three to four lies that you became a coach so that you connect with your audience. So write out a post, write out some post, use a graphic of you, know, you working out, use a graphic of you and your family, use a graphic of how coaching has changed your life. And I want you to do that once a week. I don't care when you do it, but do it once a week with a call to action, with a call to action to reach out to you, to join your team, reach out to you so you can chat or to join your live coach event or whatever you want to put your call to action. But one post a week, one purposeful coach opportunity invite post a week I want you to do on social media. Number three, okay, is this. If you are not on Instagram, I'm gonna highly recommend you getting Instagram because if you haven't heard, like Instagram stories are the best ever. So you definitely wanna start using those. And this is where you can bread crumb like crazy about the coach opportunity. Pretty much every day, I have something about coaching on my Instagram stories. I want you to start using that. I want you to start using Instagram stories and breadcrumbing about the coach opportunity. You have more people watching your Instagram stories than liking your posts on your IG feed. That's just how it is. If you use that, people are watching you. They're seeing what you're doing. Today, I just made a post. If you go look at my Instagram after this, you'll see that I took a picture of my healthy lunch in my tennis shoes and I said, eating a quick healthy lunch before I go do some training with some coaches. I love this coach life. Totally obsessed with this coach life. I'm planting a seed. I'm not inviting call to action to coaching, but I'm planting a seed about what I'm doing. And they see that I'm at home, eating a quick lunch, I'm doing some training with some coaches, and I'm obsessed with this coach life. And it's gonna start planting those seeds of, what is she doing, I wanna know more. So come Thursday, when I make that post that I crafted to join my team or to do what I'm doing, they're gonna start asking, could I do that? Could I be a part of it? So use Instagram stories and start breadcrumbing about the coach opportunity. Now this is kind of the bonus right here. I said number one was invite three people a day to the coach opportunity. Well, if you do Instagram stories, then right there you can find your three people to invite. Because all you have to do is view the people that have looked at your Instagram stories 
about that coaching thing that you're doing and there's three people that you can invite right there every single day to the coach opportunity. So they all go hand in hand. They all support one another. That's why you want to do all of them together. I'm telling you, do the six things and you'll have no issues with inviting to the coach opportunity. Um, next one is this. All of you should be inviting from your challenge group. Challengers are the best coaches because they believe in the product. They believe in the product. They believe in not just the product, but they believe in the community. And you want, want coaches to have the connective tissue. And your challengers have that because they're a part of your group. Create a post, create something, whether it's your coach event that you're gonna host, which I'm gonna encourage you all to do, whether you're doing a coach opportunity that month, or whether it's creating a post, post that in your challenge group. I do that every single month, every single month. The first week of my challenge group, I make a post that I share about becoming a coach, and then my last week, I invite every single one of them to my coach opportunity. Make some type of post, or go live in your challenge group, inviting them to be a part of this incredible opportunity. Um, yes, number four was inviting for the challenge group. So number one, take action, is you are going to invite three people a day. Number two is you're going to make a purposeful coach invite on your social media. Number three is you're going to breadcrumb pretty much every single day about the coach opportunity on your Instagram stories. Number four is you are going to share at least once in your challenge group about the coach opportunity. Make a post, whatever you wanna do, go live, but share about the coach opportunity with your challengers on a one-on-one -on -one level and you know, make a post, that's what I do. Um, number five is this. This one, I know a lot of you are probably not gonna like me, but that's okay because this is what I had to do to just go all in is I want you to lead a coach opportunity event. I don't care how you do it, but whether it's Zoom, whether it's Facebook Live, whether it's any meeting, whether it's another webinar platform, is I want you to go all in. Both feed into this opportunity. Go all in, no fear holding you back, because if you want to grow your tribe, if you want to grow this business, you just gotta go for it. You just gotta go for it like I did four months in. Lead a coach opportunity. And let me just tell you a secret. It doesn't need to be fancy. You don't need to have graphics. Go live just like I'm doing and share those three to four reasons why you became a coach. And when you invite the people that are like you, they will connect with every single one of those reasons and they will join your team because they connect with your passion, they connect with your purpose, they connect with your mission, and they're gonna wanna be a part of what you're doing because they're like you, and they're connected with you on an emotional level. So I want you to get your calendar out right now, and I wanna, I wanna know how many of you actually do this, because I'm gonna stretch you. As I want you to get out of your calendar right now, and I want you to pick a date in the week of December 18th. The week of December 18th, I want you to pick a date that you're going to lead a coach opportunity event. For me, I lead them the third week of my challenge group every single month. Every single month I do it. The third Thursday of every single month, the third week of my challenge group because it gives me the opportunity to get my challengers to get through week one, week two, and then I roll them over <laughs> into my coach opportunity event. So pick a date the week of the 18th. And the reason why I say that is because you'll be able to lead a live coach event with people who are interested in the coach opportunity before the holidays, but then you'll be able to get them to get signed up before the new year, and you'll be able to get them started with the 80 Day Obsession program in January. So get it done with, um, start sharing. That will also give you two weeks to start promoting it. Um, with this is you want to give yourself time to share about the event. You want to give time to share about the opportunity and make posts and, and invite people on a one-on-one -on -one level. All of those people that you're inviting every morning, those three coaches, all of those people that like and comment on that challenge group or that coach opportunity post that you make this week, all of those people you can invite to that event that you're going to host the week of December 18th. I want you to do that. You've got to get out of your comfort zone if you truly want to grow because that is where the magic happens. That is where the magic happens. So if you're gonna do that, I want you to raise your hand below 
and say that you are going to lead a live Coach Opportunity event. Like I said, it can be Zoom, webinar, open up a group on Facebook and invite people to that and just go live like I'm doing right now. It's so easy. Who wouldn't want to join you if they see you talking like this? They get excited. They want to be a part of it. And the last one is this. Now, this one I do and I love it. My heart, my passion, my, one of my biggest reasons for becoming a coach was friendship. It was for tangible, local, community, people. I love it, Lindsay. I'm leading a live coach event. Woo -woo. I love it, Lisa. I love it. Stephanie, love it. Coaches, makes me so excited. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, she said she's doing hers the week of December 4th. Perfect. I love it. Shaking as I say that April. Girl, go with it. Go with it. April, find your three to four whys. Just go live and talk about why you became a coach and how you want them to be a part of this movement. They're going to connect with you. I promise. Um, love it, Kimberly. Oh, I love it. So many of you are going to do it. Love it. You guys are awesome. The last one is this. Is like I said, I love community. Um, I love hosting local meetups. I enjoy just that camaraderie and the connectiveness when you get together with people. So do something local. I know that might seem really bizarre to get off the video and get off your computer, um, but last Saturday night I hosted a girls night out at my house. This girls night out was not just a girls night out, it was a coach event. I invited a whole bunch of local people, girls specifically, ladies, that I knew would be incredible coaches. I invited them all to my house, we hung out, we had appetizers, and we talked, we hung out. I shared about my mission for Imperfectly Balanced, I shared about our coach opportunity, we had some local coaches there who shared about their coach experience. Get local, get face to face, change things up. Sometimes you gotta think out of the box and you gotta get old school. Have a coffee chat, have a girls night out, do a local workout meetup where you can talk about the coach opportunity. Um, this takes it to the next level. I truly believe that. Um, so those are my six ways that you can take action. Um, inviting to the coach opportunity, coaches isn't hard. It doesn't take this magic talent. It doesn't take secret sauce at all. Um, it takes you knowing your why. That's what it comes down to. It takes, it takes you knowing your why for coaching um, and being willing to get uncomfortable and then taking action to connect, to share your story, to invite those people every day and to grow your community um, for the people that need your help. And that's what it comes down to. So that is it. That is how I invite you to the coach opportunity. It starts with those three things. Is one, discovering your why for coaching. Leading with those three to four whys um, as you get out of your comfort zone. Two, is get uncomfortable. Number three is take action now. And I gave you those six ways to take action now on how to invite to the coach opportunity and I know if you do those six things, you're going to grow. Um, you are. And I will say this. Inviting to the coach opportunity, it takes time. Not everyone's going to say yes today or tomorrow. Um, it took me a year to say yes to coaching. A year. It takes consistency. It takes time. Um, I invited 100 people to the coach opportunity last month. Um, and out of those 100 people, I think like, I think seven or eight said yes. That's okay, because I'm planting seeds with those other people that I invited that said no. So don't give up. Be consistent with those six ways to take action. Lead with your whys, and you will find your people. So that is it. Um, I'm gonna scroll through and see if there's any questions I can answer. I did good on time. I didn't wanna go too long. Um, let me scroll up. Um, Alicia said, I just started to run a club to work on this. Love it, a run club. Alicia, I'm telling you, when you do something local like that, it just, it just takes it to the next level. They see you, they experience it firsthand, um, so I love that you're doing that. Um, Melinda said, can you share an example of what your invite to this sounds like? I wanna do local events. So Melinda, I do two different types of local events. Um, I do a weekly meetup. I do a weekly meetup that is just for fitness and it's open for all local, all local people. They can come work out with me um, and that just gives them a glimpse into what I do. And then my local coach events 
It is an invite only. I actually mail out invites. Um, I have invites that I mail out to people. I make it really personal and I invite them and it's 90% fun, 10% business, but it gives them an opportunity to see what our coach Sisterhood, for me, it's all about sisterhood is what it's all about. So lead with your big idea and lead with your why when you lead with these local coach events because that will let you connect with the people that are meant to be a part of your team. Um, so Dave Milligan said, how far do you go with the event in terms of details about the opportunity? I start promoting usually a week before, Dave. So for me, um, I usually promote the week before it starts. So I have a coach opportunity that I'm hosting with my team because we have a retreat on December 7th. So I'm going to start sharing about the coach opportunity next week. Obviously I share about the coach opportunity every single day, but I will make purposeful posts, a couple of them next week, just the week before, just to get people, you know, to get filtered in. But usually the week before is when I do it. Um, let's scroll down. Um, Nina said Wednesday the 20th. Why not Wednesday? She's going to lead her coach opportunity. I love it. Um, I know nothing about IG stories, so I need to research this. Yes, research IG stories. Okay, go look at it. Go figure it out um, because it is the most easiest way to share about coaching, especially if you're shy and you're nervous to talk about it um, because it's just take a picture of you doing something and post it and people are watching and there's no like, it's just, it's a very natural invite to present the opportunity without you, you know, feeling uncomfortable. I love IG stories. Um, Kimberly said she's going to host her first one. I'm so proud of you, Kimberly. Uh, Julia said, I'm leading the Coach Life event on December 20th. Love it. Love it, ladies. You want to lock it in before the holidays. That's all I'm going to say. Lock it in. You want to have a plan. You guys are all going to lead one in December. Go ahead and look at when you're going to lead one in January. Every single month, you need to be leading one. Well, you don't need to. I recommend. I highly encourage you doing one because it will help you become the leader of your team. It will be the example for your new coaches as well. And this allows you to invite people. You can't. You want to be able to invite people to something, um, and this gives them the opportunity. Uh, April said, shaking as I say that, you're getting uncomfortable, girl. Uh, the next one said, Diana's leading hers December 4th. Stephanie, Lisa said she's doing one. I'm scrolling up to see if there's any other questions. Um, what do you say when you offer the opportunity? Uh, like the coaching opportunity? So it all depends. Honestly, Jessica, this is where, I know you guys probably are not going to like this, but there's no script to inviting the coach opportunity. There isn't. There's no script to inviting the coach opportunity. This is where you have to know why you're a coach. You've got to believe in what you're doing, and that's why you want to find your niche market, your target audience of people that coaching can meet the needs of. So for me, I'm a mom of three. Uh, I'm a registered nurse. I'm a certified holistic health coach trainer. Uh, I find those people and I'm able to very quickly identify how coaching is going to meet their needs. I have like three or four different type of audiences. So every person, it's gonna be different. This is where you've gotta build a relationship. You've got to get to know them, ask them questions. I'm telling you, sending out a script to a random person isn't gonna work. I can't send a script out to a college student I don't connect with them. How can I help? I can help them, but really, like, I don't connect with them. See, that's why it's so important to discover your whys and find those people that connect with you because then it just happens so organically, the connection. Maybe they don't become a coach, but they most likely will become a challenger with you and then become a coach. Um, let me scroll down. Uh, lots of people saying that they're going to do a coach opportunity. I love it. Heather, you're right. Coach opportunity events are fun. You get to be you. You get to be the face of your mission and your movement. You get to share your passion. I mean, all of you should be like freaking excited about this. Like you should be jumping up and down. I get goosebumps. I don't stop talking when I talk about the opportunity because I love it so much. That's what you want. When they see that fire inside of you, they're going to say yes eventually. Um, let me keep scrolling. Um, Zoom webinar is great, Matt. I love Zoom webinar. It's easy. Then you see everyone's faces. It's perfect. You can also screen share on Zoom. 
You can screen share with that. So if you want to make a presentation, I have a presentation that I used to use. I don't really use it anymore. I go live now, like I do now. Um, but make a presentation. If you're nervous and you don't want people to see you, that's how I did a webinar. I put a PowerPoint presentation together. I did some graphics. You know, it wasn't good. But I put it together and allowed me not to be on the camera. And I got comfortable with just presenting. And eventually, as my confidence grew, I was able to to get away from the presentation and just talk like this. Uh, so start with that. Zoom webinar is awesome. I love Zoom, Zoom webinar. Then you can see their faces as well. More connection. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. Cecilia said, I have the opposite. I get a ton of likes on my IG post, but the same 10 people watching my stories. How do you get more to watch your IG stories? Oh, Cecilia, that's a totally different topic. Growing your Instagram. Um, totally different topic. That's gonna take much longer. So make a note, Keyshawn, Keyshawn girl, so I'm gonna talk about IG on here. I think we've had a lot of IG. Uh, next one, how do you invite donuts without being salesy? Tony, this all goes back to knowing your whys. When I go on Instagram, say I am sitting down and I'm gonna sit down this morning, like I did this morning, and I looked at my recent coach opportunity breadcrumb post on Instagram stories, or maybe the one I did on you know, Facebook, whatever one it is, and say I go look through all of the people I'm going to find people that I identify with. I'm going to go research them. I'm going, and this takes time, so this is gonna take time. I'll go look at their page and I'll say, you know what, they're a mom. They like health and fitness. They're a registered nurse. Or, you know, I find those people that are me and I, I do some research and then I invite them. That is where I don't, I'm never salesy because I actually connect with them on a real level. Like, it's a real person that I actually could be best friends with, and it's someone that I would hang out with on a normal daily basis. That's who you want. You want those people to join your team, your best friends. Who are your BFFs? Those are the people that you want to connect with, those people that are your whys for coaching. And it won't be salesy. Be real life, be genuine, um, and get them to see how coaching could help them, how it would benefit them. It's easy for me to talk to a, a fitness fanatic mom about the coach opportunity. It's easy because I am that. It's easy for me to talk to a registered nurse about the opportunity because I get her passion to help people, but let's take it to the next level. So you have to connect with them. Uh, next one, let's see if there's any other questions. I'll give it a couple more minutes. Sorry to ask, but can you give me an example of what your invites look like? Um, I just said the invites. The invites, I don't have a script. I do not have a script, honestly, for my coach invites. It is really connecting. It's connecting with the people, and it's, it's finding my people and relating to them, and it's natural. For example, this is just an example. I'm obsessed with black and white. Everything I do is, like, themed black and white, and I found one girl who has a similar love on Instagram. She's a mom, she loves black and white. We connected over all of her black and white pictures on Instagram. She became a coach on her team. I connected with something very simple that was a common love, black and white, everything black and white, active wear. We connected with that. I didn't send her a script. I connected on real life that I loved this. We had the same obsession. Oh, you should become a coach. It was very easy. It was natural. Uh, no, scrolling down. What do you say in your donuts? I kind of addressed that. What's your criteria for approaching people to invite to coaching? Honestly, there's no criteria. It's just do they, for me personally, are they challengers of mine? And do they fit my areas, my areas that I can help them focus on? Whatever it is, accountability, friendship. Um, more passion and more purpose in life. But I do, I do find my people, people like me. Um, so it's really important to know your avatar, to know your target audience. Because like I said, I'm not gonna go invite an 18 year old to join my team because that's not my niche market. So it's really important to know your niche market, to know who you are and to know your whys because when you know all of that, you're gonna be able to find the right people to invite. Love you, Emily. Um, love it. I'm looking the rest. Lisa did private message live video. I think that's it. Do you have any other questions? Because I think we are almost done. Um, I'm looking the rest. Can you screen if you go live on Facebook? Can you can you you can screen share if you go live on Facebook from your computer now? So, oh yeah, you can. I totally forgot about that. I haven't downloaded that option. Um, Tony said, "Thank you." Do you do most of your donuts on IG or on Facebook? Tony, I do both. 
So I usually rotate and it all depends on kind of my engagement on my Facebook and my Instagram. So normally I will do Instagram pretty much every morning. I will do Instagram invites, um, but then I do more spontaneous, I call them spontaneous invites. I do those on Facebook and that those invites are from posts that I make. So like I recommended to all of you to make a challenge, not a challenge group, but to make a coach opportunity invite post on social media. If I make a post like that on Thursday and I see that I have a couple likes on it or a couple comments, I will do spontaneous invites where I will just invite those people that liked it if they look like they're people that would, you know, fit into my, my niche for coaching. Um, so I do invite on Facebook, but I will say I definitely invite more on Instagram. Facebook is more kind of just an organic invite. It comes from my posts when I follow up with my likes and my comments. Any other questions? Thank you all for getting on. I love sharing with all of you. It's so much fun. <laughs> any other questions? You all good? Do you have any other questions? Comment below. Oh, Lauren has one. I know you want to make a connection with people first. How long from first talking to them do you invite to groups or coaching? Um, for me, it all depends. When I invite people to, you're welcome, Heather. When I invite people to the coach opportunity from Instagram, let's talk about Instagram. If I look at them and they say, say I would most likely follow up with people that watched my little picture today of my sandwich and me doing this training. I'll follow up with these people tomorrow. Most likely, I will not, uh, I'll just invite them. I'll just invite a handful of them to the coach opportunity, but I always connect with them on a personal level. Like I'll go look at their Instagram and I'll see, like I said, are they this, 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 and this? I'll make sure that they're kind of my people. And then I will most likely say to them, you know, hey, whoever, hey Tony, thank you so much for following me on my Insta stories. I love that you're following me. I'm all about helping women find their balance and getting healthy from the inside out. I saw that you're a registered nurse. That is so awesome. So you definitely have a passion for helping people. I have no idea if you'd be interested, no pressure at all, but I would love to share more with you about my coach sisterhood. We have lots of registered nurses on our team. I know that you would love it and it would allow you to help more people on a deeper level with their health and fitness. Could I share more info with you? That's kind of like something I would say. It's not scripted, it's very personal, and I'm connecting with them, but I'm thanking them for watching my Insta stories. I've done my research by looking at their page. So no, I don't just go in there and script a whole bunch of people. That's not what you're supposed to do. I go in there with purpose, and I go in, with their, go in there finding my people. Um, are you coming out and saying Beachbody, or are you? I'm curiosity marketing, Heather. Totally curiosity marketing, for sure. That is me. Um, I want people to see the value in what coaching provides before scaring them off, and that's just the truth. I'm just gonna say the truth. I didn't become a coach for a whole entire year because of the word beach body. That's just the truth. So that is where curiosity marketing comes in, is lead with coaching and how coaching has helped you and how it's transformed you and what it's given to you. And then they don't care about the rest. They don't, they don't care about the rest because they see that coaching will give them this, 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 and this, and they see how it's transformed your life and they're gonna to wanna to do it. They're going to wanna to do it. Um, you're welcome, Lauren. Any other questions? I'll keep answering. What time is it right now? I'll answer like two more questions. Two more questions. I'll stay on here all day long, but I can't. I gotta get my kiddos. So two more questions, and then I'll be out. I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Um, okay, so Tony said on Facebook, are you using your like page or your personal page? I use both. I use both personal and my like page. I do all, I do three platforms. I do Facebook personal, Facebook like page, and I do Instagram. Those are the only platforms I use. I share the same content on all three because I'm the same person on all three, and that's just how I do it um, for me personally. Um, okay, so. Danielle, or Daniel said, so if they say yes, they like more information, what do you send them? This is where I always have something to give to them, Danielle. And this is where 
doing a coach opportunity is really, really, really helpful is I do have an email. I have like an email that just talks to them about my team and my mission and what coaching is all about. But I always have some type of coaching opportunity event on the horizon that I can invite them to. Sometimes I do two a month, but I always do one a month. So I always can say, hey, I want you to jump in, listen to this live event. I'm gonna host it in two weeks from now. Come listen, come learn, see what it's all about, and let me know what you think. And I send them that. Now, if you do coach opportunity events, you can have a recording. So a lot of times, because I have done so many coach opportunity events, especially live ones, I just upload the video save it on my computer, upload it to YouTube, and then I have that to hand out to people. So when someone says, hey, I would like more information, instead of them having to wait until December 7th when my next one starts, I'm gonna actually send them the link of the recorded one from November. So you can see that's why there's a benefit because it gives you right now resourceful tools to give to potential, potential coaches but then you also still have the opportunity to invite them to the live one if they wanna come see that as well. So I have an email that I send out to all of them and I do have a pre-recorded or I have a pre-recorded video that I send them from my last month's live event that they can watch as well. Um, so that's another reason why you wanna do a coach opportunity event because it will give you resources to use for other potential coaches to watch. You're welcome, love. Any other questions? One more and I'm out. Peace out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks so much for getting on. You're welcome. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. One thing I will say too, I had one coach, um, this is just a little example. I had one coach who was really, really, really scared to talk to people, really nervous. So what she did was she went on Zoom by herself. No one was on there. She went on Zoom and she screen shared her her presentation by herself. She felt fine by herself. No one was watching. She was comfortable. She was confident. And she used the recording. So if for some of you, if you are really shy, don't use that as, as an excuse. Don't use that as a self-limiting belief that you can't lead a coach opportunity. Get on Zoom. Do a little presentation by yourself. Just you, yourself, and that's it. Record it. Use that recording that you can pass out until you're comfortable to lead your own. But I would say this get uncomfortable, lead your own opportunity, and I promise you, you will never regret it. Um, so I'm gonna sign off. Thanks so much for getting on. If you have more questions, just comment below and I'll try to catch up on more questions once we sign off. Uh, thanks again for jumping on. Really blessed to be able to share with all of you. Megan, it's a great idea. It really does help. Oh wait, Brandy said, uh, whoever this coach is that went on Zoom alone. Yep, do that Brandy. There's nothing wrong with it. People don't know that other people aren't on. Go on Zoom by yourself. Do the presentation by yourself, then you have a resource to pass out to people, coach potentials, if you're not ready to lead your own. There's nothing wrong with that. At least you're doing something than what you're doing now. So that is it. Bye, you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Go take action right now. Right now, take action. Look at those six things I told you to do. Get them done. Get them done. And discover your three to four whys. Write them down. And I wanna also tell you this. Send it all, send your three to four whys, send whatever you're gonna do, those take actions. Send it to your success partner, send it to your upline coach. Let them know what you're doing so they can hold you accountable because accountability is everything. Um, it will help you get support too. Ask them to jump on your webinar, You know, ask them to give you feedback on maybe your, your coach invite post that you're gonna make if you haven't made one before. The more support you have, the more success you're gonna have. So also kudos to all of you for getting on this training. Um, this is your personal development. This is gonna help you learn, grow, uh, and that's it. So have a fabulous Tuesday. Bye guys.